Hi, I'm Finlay and you're watching the Run For YouTube channel. In this episode, we're going to be talking through when you should and shouldn't run in super shoes. And by super shoes, we mean running shoes that feature high energy returning foams and special propulsive structures such as carbon fibre plates. I'll also be talking a little bit about how I integrate them into my running. So let's talk about when it's a good idea to use super shoes. Super shoes can significantly improve your running economy and that simply means that the cost of running at a given speed is lower. So that makes them the perfect choice for racing. If you're trying to run your best time in a 5k, 10k, half marathon or marathon, then there's a significant likelihood that these are going to help you run a faster time and help get you to the finish line in more comfort. Now, there's a reason that I said if you're trying to run your best time and not run fast times, and that's because super shoes are not just for elites. They're for a wide range of abilities. For example, the right super shoes could be the difference between somebody breaking four hours in a marathon and not. The other really significant benefit of racing in super shoes is that they can reduce your recovery time and that has a lot of implications. Let's say you're doing a half marathon to test out your legs ahead of a marathon, you're going to do some race pace work in that, then chances are your legs are going to feel much fresher, much faster after that half marathon if you use a super shoe and that means that you can get back into your training routine faster. It's obviously going to be a slightly different case when you come to a marathon because you're going to need to take a bit more recovery and you're really going to have to reset the system once you've done a marathon. But I used to be absolutely broken once I'd raced a marathon. I could barely walk. My legs would feel absolutely smashed. But that has completely changed from racing in super shoes. I can pretty much go out for a jog the next day and feel pretty good. And that a lot of that is really down to those super shoes. And that has a lot of implications for the rest of the year. If you're racing multiple times throughout a season, then it means you can start progressing onto your training more effectively at a faster rate. If you're doing a spring marathon and then an autumn marathon, that transition period is going to feel much smoother. You're going to be able to get back into a rhythm much faster and probably going to improve the chances and likelihood that you want to do another race if your legs don't feel completely broken when you finish. Now, one of the best ways to prepare for a half marathon or a marathon is doing longer interval sessions at your race pace. So a classic session for a marathon would be something like five times 5k at marathon pace. Problem is you're probably going to be doing this session with some fatigue in the legs from the training you've done in the previous week and also just the stress of life as well might be in the system. These sessions are also very demanding. They're really hard on the body and they take a lot of effort. So using a super shoe in these sorts of sessions is a very good idea because the chances are it's just going to improve the quality of your workout and increase the likelihood of you hitting those paces and having a good session. They're probably also going to reduce the recovery time from those sessions too. And building on this point, most of us are going to be doing this sort of session at the weekend and unless you're an elite athlete chances are you're not going to get to put your feet up lying on the sofa for the rest of the day chances are you're going to be wolfing down a recovery shake devouring what's ever in the biscuit tin and then getting on with the rest of life and for me super shoes make such a difference in these sessions because it means i can get on with the rest of the weekend without hobbling around everywhere and the final point on these longer sessions is which super shoes should you use? Now, my advice is you probably want to do your last key workout in the super shoes that you're going to race in. So you're going to break them in, but you want to keep them as fresh as possible. And that's because you're going to get the most benefit from super shoes when they're more new. It's fair to say that when you start getting closer to that 150 to 200 mile mark in a pair of super shoes, you're really going to start to see those benefits diminish. So ideally, you want to run in as fresh a pair as possible. So that means in the sessions that come before that, it's a good idea to use a pair of older super shoes that you've maybe raced in to the point of that 150 to 200 miles where they're not going to give you such a benefit in racing, but they are still going to give you a benefit in training sessions. And that's a really good way to orientate between your super shoes. 
my top tip is to try different super shoes and find out what feels the fastest for you because for me the alpha fly are the best racing shoes for me to run in they give me the most benefit so i save these just for races the vapor fly still feels fast but doesn't feel quite as fast as the alpha fly so i do all those long marathon workouts in these and that means when i transition to the alpha fly for race day i just feel a little bit more of an extra spring an extra pop under my feet as many of you will know it's a great idea to include some shorter faster pace intervals in your weekly workouts and that's because doing short periods of work above your threshold is a great way to improve your speed and then translate into improved race performances now the problem is even with taking periods of rest in these sessions it's still hard work hitting the target intensities and getting above race pace and that's where super shoes can really help it make it easier i say easier it makes it more achievable to hit those target paces in those sessions and that can also translate into improved quality of the sessions you might find doing those sessions in super shoes your muscles aren't breaking down as much you're not feeling quite as much fatigue in your legs so you can maybe do slightly more reps and just the overall performance in the session is better and your recovery time from those sessions should also improve also be shorter than if you were to just do them in standard shoes now the other option you've got in those sessions is using a more of a takedown option for them so most brands have a model in their lineup which features similar technologies to their all-out race day shoes but these kind of takedown versions feature similar properties and offer some of the benefits of those race day shoes but they're considerably cheaper and more durable so they're better options for those weekly interval sessions that you're probably going to be doing all throughout the year you won't find many elite runners who don't do tempo workouts in their weekly routine and a tempo workout is typically a 20 to 40 minute long effort at a hard but very sustainable pace now the exact intensity and duration of this tempo workout is going to be highly dependent on the training history of the runner but what you're looking to achieve in these sessions is a very high quality consistent effort which is very efficient and that's where using a super shoe at this sort of intensity can be very beneficial but having said that that is the perfect workout to use one of those takedown models again models such as the adidas boston and saucony endorphin speed are perfect shoes for that effort when you just want to sit into that set speed and hold it really comfortably for that period of time so that brings us on to when it's not such a good idea to use super shoes and the answer to that question is pretty easy we don't recommend using super shoes for your easy and steady pace runs and there's a number of reasons as to why that is the case firstly if you were to run at race pace in standard daily mileage running shoes and super shoes you're going to see experience a massive difference it is so much easier to run at race pace in your super shoes but if you start to do too much of those easy and steady pace runs in your super shoes chances are you're probably going to start to notice less of a difference when you then transition into the super shoes and perception of effort is everything in running you can't overestimate the importance of the placebo effect even if a super shoe isn't improving your biomechanics as much as you think it might be if you think it's giving you a benefit and making an intensity feel easier that is going to translate into improved performances and you're going to lose some of that if you train in them too much there's also a potential injury risk of using super shoes too much due to the way they can alter your biomechanics they may transfer more of the load higher up your kinetic chain so more to the quads to the glutes to the top of the hamstrings and that could lead to overuse problems for some runners so yes while they can help reduce muscle soreness and fatigue after sessions using them too much could cause some potential problems now it might sound incredibly simple but super shoes are designed for fast running and that's because everything inside the shoe is designed to propel you forward and while we still want to move forward efficiently when we're running at slower speeds when we run slowly our feet spend more time on the ground than when we run faster and 
when we do those lower intensity runs, if our feet are on the ground for longer, those stiff carbon fiber plates can ultimately just feel a bit awkward, unnatural, and not that comfortable under the feet. Chances are you're gonna find something that feels softer, more forgiving, and a little bit more flexible, a lot more comfortable and fluid on those daily miles. And the final point is that Super shoes are much more expensive and less durable than daily mileage running shoes. And the reason that they're less durable is because weight is such an important factor when it comes to improving running shoe performance. And if you look at the bottom of most super shoes, you'll see very little in the way of outsole rubber. And that's because that's one of the heaviest components of a running shoe. So they take that away so that they're not adding unnecessary weight to the shoe. There's also usually very thin layers of outsole rubber, and that's because these have to meet certain regulations. The stack height can't be too thick. So by making that outsole rubber really thin, it means that they can get maximum amounts of those propulsive foams, the things that really make the difference when you're running fast into these shoes so it's simply a false economy to do your easy steady miles in super shoes you're just not getting the benefit of what they're designed for so saving them for those fast-paced workouts and races is what's the best idea so in summary even though we've spent quite a long time talking through it it's pretty simple what we recommend is keeping your super shoes for races and those faster paced workouts such as your race effort runs your short fast intervals and then your tempo workouts when you drop the effort and you're running on those lower intensity days that's when you really should just be sticking to a daily mileage running shoe and keeping those super shoes under the bench and obviously there's going to be some exceptions to the rules but chances are if you follow this guidance you will get the most out of super shoes and really feel the benefits and there's no doubt about it integrating super shoes into your running routine can improve your enjoyment of the sport and help you get the most out of the hard effort that you're putting in irrespective of what pace that you're running at and who knows Wearing super shoes in that race could be the difference between you getting that time and just missing out on it. And that brings us to the end of this episode. If you do have any questions, please make sure and comment below because we will answer any question that you put into it. We know that this can be quite a complicated subject and you might have some questions on how different models stack up against each other. We've tried and tested most of the super shoes out there, so happy to answer any questions on that. If you did enjoy this episode, please make sure and hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more content like this. See you soon.